Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kat with Spasmodic Arts and this is Bandit. He's going to be helping me out today um, because apparently he's not been the best helper with uh, my fiance's gaming. Um, so today what we're going to do is we are going to be looking at everything you need for this acrylic pour series. So the way this is going to work is each um, video I'm going to be releasing a different technique and I'll explain it a little bit more through the video but we are going to look at everything you're going to need and each video is hopefully going to be able to be something that you can follow along with so let's get started so the first thing you're going to need um, is paints now you can get all different types of paints. You can get large bottles, small bottles. Um, one second. I wanted to grab a couple of examples. So this has a retail price of $16. I got it on clearance. It's a heavy body paint. As long as it's acrylic, we can mess around with it. This would be something from Michaels. It's in a tube. Walmart also has these. They range around $3. Um, I can actually put the correct price of everything that I'm going to be showing you up here in the corner. But I suggest starting out with your good old Apple Barrel Craft Mate Craft Acrylic Paints. Oops. <laughs> um, these are going to be cheap, extremely effective. They're not going to hinder you in making anything um, amazing. They're going to only help. Sorry, my count. My cat just found a toy. I have seven animals. Sorry. So these are not going to hinder you. You're still going to make amazing projects. Um, they might not last as long as, say, a, a paint that's a little bit more expensive. That's for artists, quote unquote, um, an artist paint. But I would definitely recommend these little bottles. I'm going to be working today with something from Michaels. <clears throat> now, I would also recommend these but since I do want to try and make these videos as thrifty as possible and I would also like to eventually have like a come shop with me video where we talk about um, the different paints, where you can buy them and how you can buy them for the cheapest price. I would only buy these if you have a Michaels around you or you have access to like online Michaels and then only buy them when they're 50% off because each of these is one quart and you get it for $9.99. With the coupon, it's 50% of $9.99, accurate price here. So I got each of these with a 50% off coupon. I think I bought one of them full price, but the colors we'll be working with in this series are going to be our primary. So red, blue, yellow, this is Artist Loft, so Michael's brand, Acrylic Flow. So it's already like a looser acrylic paint compared to even just this Artist Loft that's in the tube. And it's because it says it's a flow acrylic. So it's been designed to flow easier. So we're going to be using the yellow, the red, in the blue. Now, a couple of reasons why we're going to be using just primary colors. I want to challenge myself to back to basics. Working with primary colors, I don't really do that a lot. We're also going to be adding just a bit of white and a bit of black. And see, I this is from Walmart. This is just Craft Smart. I got a large thing of it um, because I didn't have a coupon for one of these. Um, artist lofts so I'm always looking for a bargain because I have to stress to you enough you don't need expensive paints for this and this is just like my um, silver but we're not even gonna be messing with that so blue yellow red and white blue yellow red white black those are the colors we're going to be using in this series you are going to be able to get so many amazing colors with acrylic pouring, just using these three colors. And then if you guys want to go and practice on your own, you get secondaries out of primaries and you get um, tertiary, 
I think it's called tertiary colors from secondary colors that you make with the Grand Mac Daddy starting it all off primary colors. So we are going to be working with those colors. Um, again, buy however you like. I definitely recommend buying cheaper. You're going to work through a ton of these colors. I'm just letting you know. You are going to use so much paint. You definitely want to do something that is budget and wallet friendly. Okay, so the next thing we're going to be using, and I'll get into explaining more of what each of these is for a little bit later on. Definitely once he goes to sleep, I'll be filming another video because I technically can use acrylic paints around my dogs and cats. Um, one of the, my cats does have asthma, so I do have to be careful about the fumes, but with Bandit, while I can use acrylic paints, some of the pouring mediums that we're going to be using I can't necessarily work with, so he goes upstairs in his bedroom and he takes a nap, or um, tonight he's going to go to sleep, he goes to sleep and then I work with colors. So let me get all of the ingredients for the pouring mediums. Did you think it was going to be a lot? So, I'm going to be talking about some pouring mediums. These are just the pouring mediums I personally have worked with. Um, there's a ton of pouring mediums out here, but I have yet to graduate to using a more, um, I guess, professional grade pouring medium. These are extremely budget friendly, and honestly, I think they work extremely well. So. To make a long, I guess, explanation extremely short, um, pouring medium just helps your paint flow better. Now, we do incorporate water into some of these pouring mediums just to help a tiny bit with the consistency of our paint, but water is not a binding agent. It's actually going to disrupt your paint and it's going to um, your paint's going to crack, it's not going to flow as well as it looks, it's going to muddy it up. So you really do need a pouring medium, but good news, the cheapest one is just like a dollar or two. So let's start with that one. This is Glue All. It's a multi-purpose glue. It's obviously from Elmer's. Um, it is a PVA glue. I'm not 100% sure what that stands for, so I will leave a uh, description right here of what PVA stands for. I do know that it's different from school glue, so it does need to either say glue all, multi-purpose glue, or PVA glue. Um, they do the, have these in smaller sizes. They have these in larger gallon sizes, but I just picked this up for... Um, $4.95 at um, Walmart and it is 16 fluid ounces so recently especially having my bird and not um, at the time having read up on what I could use for pouring medium I mixed and you can get these at the dollar store I highly recommend looking for everything um, related to pouring or stirring or um, things like that at the dollar store or at like a Dollarama, anything like that. They're amazing. So this is just a little squeeze bottle. I have 70% um, glue to, no, I'm sorry, I have 80% glue to 20% water. This is a pouring medium I use sometimes. And then in this, oh no, not this one. And then there's also glue in this mixture, and I'm about to talk about what this mixture is. But basically, glue is amazing. It's super cheap. You could purchase this glue and then go down a different aisle in Walmart and get your craft glue. Just remember, have it say glue all or something like PVA glue, and that's going to be an amazing pouring medium for beginners. Um, a couple reasons why it wouldn't be a good pouring medium excuse me, a good pouring medium for you in the long run is going to be that it is acidic, so it's definitely going to not withstand UV rays or the test of time. It's not um, anything that's going to last for years and years and years and years and years. But honestly, 
with your beginning projects, by the time you're probably ready to um, move on, you've learned a little bit and I mean, for me, I have so many beginning projects, I honestly scrap them most of the time. So I don't think it's really needed to uh, have an archival, um, like an archival worthy pouring medium. But who knows, that's just me. So our next one, I can't lift up because it's super heavy. So I'm gonna zoom on in. This is Flood, Bla Flood Brand Floetrol. It is liquid latex based paint additive. Um, they have two. They have one for oil paints and then one for just like general purposes. So I purchased the one for general purposes. This is a paint conditioner that elongates the use of paint. It is readily available at Home Depot, Lowe's, and it's even on Amazon to purchase. Obviously, the glue all is as well. Um, this is one gallon. I purchased one gallon for $14, and it lasts me a really long time. I've been doing this for several months, and this is my second gallon of Floetrol. Um, this is going to be your best friend. Honestly, there are still some professional poor um, fluid artists there are still professional fluid artists who use Floetrol. It gives you cells, which if you want to know what cells are, oops, something fell. You see these little round circles? These are cells. So these cells are a little bit more uniform and were used um, with a different product. I'll show you in a second. But Floetrol can give you something along those lines. I don't really have like a, oh wait, yes I do. So this painting was done with Floetrol for the cells, and as you can see, they're a little bit more tiny, a little bit more um, subtle, but I still think they're extremely pretty. I don't like the painting, <laughs> but I like the cells. So Floetrol I have used in conjunction with glue wall and water. That's what's in here. This is a mixture of, uh, let me see. 70% Floetrol, 10%, no, yeah, 70% Floetrol, 20%, 30%, jeez, sorry, I will put these calculations on the screen as well. This was 70% Floetrol to 30% glue wall and then 10% water. Um, again, I got this drink container at the dollar store. And then over here, in a whole other bottle, I just have Floetrol and water. I did 80% Floetrol, I'm sorry, 90% Floetrol to 10% water. And this is basically what I use when I'm in the middle of painting and I'm like, oh crap, this paint needs to be thinner. No matter what pouring medium I'm, use, medium I'm using, uh, the Floetrol 90%, 10% water is what I keep on hand to emergency thin or just regular thin my paint <clears throat> so again these are really the three we're looking at water which I hope everyone knows what water looks like I understand coffee addicts that it's hard but I hope you know what it looks like glue all and Floetrol those are honestly the ones I work with they're the only ones I've worked with um, you can always experiment different ratios. I would honestly never have water be more than 20% of your pouring medium recipe, but I would definitely try 100% Floetrol, 100% glue wall, and then just kind of go from there and figure out what you like best and what works um, well for you. But yeah, these are extremely affordable and that's what we're going to be working with in this series. So let me put this up. All right, let's talk about what we're actually going to be pouring on and what you can pour on. What can you pour on? Literally anything. You can pour 
on absolutely anything. Um, we're going to go through some of the things that I have around my home that I have poured on. And um, yeah, maybe it'll give you a little bit of an idea. So I don't have any tiles right now, but this is a four by four ceramic tile. This is actually alcohol ink that I was playing with. Um, but these were 16 cents if I ordered them off Lowe's.com. I bet you can find extremely cheap ceramic tile for a good price at any of your hardware stores. Um, what you can eventually do with this is resin the top, put some cork board on the back, and you've got coasters. I mean, you could obviously just use them as artwork, but that's an example of what you could do with them. Another thing I've purchased, I pour on wood. I pour on all different types of wood. You can buy wood from um, Lowe's. Any um, hardware store, have it cut into different sizes and lengths. You can use MDF, you can use anything from the hardware store. Literally, that's why the hardware stores are like my new BFFs. <laughs> this is some laminated wood that I purchased off Amazon. They are four by four circles. I think you measure circles width and length. Look, this is not the math. This is not the place to come if you need to learn the maths. So I purchased, I think, 60 of these for $8. Um, and I have yet to really work with them a bunch, but pouring on them is definitely easy. And I enjoy it. All right, so now we'll get to some like typical pouring things. There's also something that I don't have here that I do want to purchase eventually called Yepo Paper. It is an acrylic type paper. I don't have it right now, but if I ever <laughs> do eventually make the plunge into buying it, I will let you know. But it's good that I don't have it right here because it is expensive and it's something that I don't know, I don't necessarily recommend for beginners, which is why I haven't bought it because I'm still learning. So a couple of things that I use. This is a canvas pad. Um, again, from Michaels. Um, this is what is on canvases, but it's just in like a loose tear pad. You can purchase this. It is nice to pour on. The only thing I recommend is definitely wrapping it around wood like most canvases are, or just having something temporarily to stretch it out on because it does like to warp under the weight of the paints but it's also really amazing for swatching which I recommend you do with all of your paints like this is some of my Liquitex heavy body pro acrylics that I have um, I swatched them on paper but I need to go back and swatch them on canvas so I know exactly what they look like so this is optional I believe it was $10.99 and of course I used the coupon so it was Cheaper than $8.99 or $10.99. Okay, so for canvases, I recommend starting out any canvas you use um, being, uh, sorry, I wanted to grab this, a just like super value canvas pack. Um, I have some 16 by 20 inch ones. I bought this when they were on sale um, for $10 for a value pack. So keep your eyes peeled because Michael's, Joann's, any craft store that I know of around me, even Hobby Lobby will have these canvas packs on sale. I think at Hobby Lobby they're consistently like 10 bucks. So this blue at the top honestly just means that the canvas is for beginners oops sorry it's a little more flimsy it's not like rock hard which you would like it to be which we'll talk about that if I ever um, work with canvases it's just it's just like a loosey-goosey kind of inexpensive canvas 
Walmart has started carrying a bunch of canvases, different sizes. Um, I would not recommend at Walmart purchasing canvas board, which I'm going to talk about in a second, because dollar store canvas boards, so dollar, dollar stores have canvases. Let me see if I can find one real quick. I can't find one, but they're really inexpensive. I believe I have a video of acrylic pouring, which I will put in this playlist, but I definitely didn't talk through how to do it. Um, the link is in the description below, but we were using dollar store canvases there, and I think I talked a little bit about them, but they warped. They completely bent. They warped. Now, if you find a dollar store canvas that has wood and then the canvas paper, give it a shot. Ours did okay when we were acrylic pouring on them. But I would definitely recommend going for a little bit more of a pricier canvas. And by pricier, I'm talking like an 8x12 for like 3 bucks at Walmart or any of those such things. Now, I have a ton of canvases. I have a ton of empty canvases and canvases that are done. I don't know where to keep them all. So I am trying to switch over to canvas board, which I will talk about, and different types of papers that will hold acrylic pouring just because when you're practicing you are go 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 and even when you're not practicing and you're actually for real like trying to create a masterpiece um you literally have nowhere to keep the canvases <laughs> eventually so I'm trying to find like a, a space saver so if space is an issue I do have an alternative besides the expensive yuppo paper that I'm going to talk about in a minute so Today, and just today, I've never worked with this before, I purchased Artist Loft Artist Level 2 um, Gallery Wrapped Canvases. So, the difference between this canvas and the canvas I previously showed you is this canvas paper is sturdier, it's wrapped tighter, and it's an overall higher quality for artists. It does make it more expensive though. The only reason I purchased these is because one of these 18, 14 by 18 inch canvases was $17, but then it was buy one, get two free. So I technically got three canvases for $17. And I do feel as though some of my pouring techniques are advanced enough to possibly use a more expensive canvas. So again, like I said through this entire video, how much you want to spend is up to you. I honestly think the frugal heart in me is saying try and keep it at a lower cost before you dive on in. So then we have canvas panel value pack. What this is in essence is it's a really sturdy cardboard on the back. There's five in here. It's sturdy cardboard on the back, and then someone has wrapped canvas paper around the cardboard and taped it. That's honestly as easy as I can explain it. So this is five paintings that I could have take up half an inch, so I'm definitely down for this. this sorry, my cat is trying to mess with scissors through a box. So this is what we are going to be working on. I purchased ten, so two packs. I have ten of these canvases. Um, they're 8 by 8s I just like squares over rectangles, I'm weird, um, but you can purchase whatever you'd like to follow along in this series, and I don't know what else I have to say about them. I've never used Michael's brand, but I've seen other artists use Michael's brand, so I'm almost 100% sure these won't bend. I'm not going to give you my, like, full promise of it, because I have not tried it out yet, but... I'm pretty sure this is what we will be working with. If not, I will do a whole video about shopping for cheap canvases, which I will post before I even get started on any instructional videos. So yeah, this is what we will be working with surface-wise. Like I said, you could literally pour on anything. And trust me, I've tried. Like there's this little paper mache bear that I purchased at Michael's. I, I tried to pour on him. It didn't work out so well, but his brother went in the trash. <laughs> um, and now I just have a ram random paper mache canvas. All right, so our next section is going to be uh, mixing tools. So let me get some of those together. All 
All right, we're gonna keep this super simple. Plastic cups are your best friends. I normally get like a giant pack of plastic cups from the dollar store. Like I said, dollar stores, dollar generals, any of those things. Oh wait, I see one. And my cat's hid one so I can show you. Something like this. I use something like this. Not that one, because my cat's chewed on it. But that is what you're going to want to be using for mixing things. You can reuse them. I will normally wash them out, but I just did like a giant purge of my cleaning area. Um, but acrylic paint is easy to wash off. Now, I also have these plastic um, cups that have lids for them. This is from Diamond Painting. So I do mix in these and they work in a pinch. I also really like to have them on hand for storing colors that I've mixed but don't need to use for a while. So I have a bunch of these and they've got the lid. So again, you can get a bunch of cups from the dollar store for a dollar and then buy as many popsicle sticks or eat as many popsicles as you need to have a stash on hand. I got these at, of course, the dollar store. You can break them apart to preserve them and you can just mix paint with the short end. I like to use the full stick, but this is literally all you need for mixing. I wouldn't dirty your household cups because you eventually forget to wash them and then throw them away. <laughs> I know from personal experience, um, but that is, that is all you need. So now I'm gonna get into some optional tools, but everything I've shown from this point, going back towards the beginning of the video is what you would need. All right, let's talk about some optional things. We're not gonna spend a lot of time on them, especially since this is my beginner series, um, because like I said, they are optional. I will always let you know in my videos when you can use them, but you don't have to. So let's start with the, um, oh my gosh, my rain just died. Silicone. So this is Cell Magic Silicone from Hobby Lobby. I don't like it as much as like treadmill silicone, buying silicone. Um, uh, outdoor and sporting goods shops. I think Home Depot has some. Amazon, a, lit, a, a big um, four fluid ounce bottle goes a long, long, long way if you want to make the um, initial purchase. But I do have to say, when you are finishing your painting, so your acrylic paintings need to cure or dry for at least two weeks, on top of that, if you get in the habit of using silicone and you want to finish the top of your painting, you are going to need to then wipe the entire painting with baby wipes until you get that greasy silicone off, or you're going to have to put baby powder all over the painting and then use a brush to wipe it off several times because you want to deactivate that silicone before you put anything on top of your painting. It's fun to work with silicone. I have several silicone paintings. I just have to have like a baby powder party <laughs> one day and get all of the silicone off of my paintings. Now silicone is for cells. So, gloves. <laughs> Can you tell I visited the doctor recently? Get gloves if you want, you don't have to. Sometimes I have eczema on my hands and I don't wanna wash them repeatedly so I will put gloves on to protect them from getting dirty from paint. Most of the time I'm too impatient and I forget. And if you don't wanna hijack some gloves from the doctor, um, or sorry, I'm sorry, liberate some gloves from the doctor, you can also just buy some boxes from like Harbor Freight, CVS, Walmart, pretty much anywhere. Okay, a level is optional. I would recommend it. I guessed for a long time that my table was level I bought a level and it 
It showed me I was pretty right. My table is mostly level, but you do want to be pouring on level surfaces. So if you're going to be using a chair or if you're going to be pouring on your carpet or just like any surface, honestly, get a level. They're really inexpensive, a dollar or two. You don't have to. I'm not even going to lie. I'm honestly not that great at using them still. But like the, 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 what's it called? Do as I say, do as I say, not as I do person is telling you, you should probably have level surfaces at all times when painting. Okay. Butane torch. These seem scary. They're not scary. Um, this has butane in it. I use this to pop bubbles. I use this to activate cells, to burn some silicone off. Um, it was $13 on Amazon and then $4 for the little butene canister that I use to fill up the bottom. I can do a whole video on how to fill up the tank because I think mine's running low. They're super safe, honestly, as long as you just use like a basic rule not to touch the tip when there's, you know, the flaming hot stuff coming out of it. I would use it if you're under 18 and you need like a parent's, if you need parent's permission, just like ask them to show you how to work it properly or work it, you know, for them. They can work it themselves. Sorry, I got distracted. Um, yeah, so it's like, it's a, it's like a dessert torch. And I got it because I like it and fire. Like mostly kidding. All right, a couple of other things. You can get things like um, a putty knife. Uh, to smooth out large portions of paint. I will show you where this can come in handy, but a reason I say this is optional is you can also just get one of those wooden sticks and spread it around. So I will be using the wooden sticks in the series, but if you want something larger and a little bit more comfortable to maneuver, which I will show you eventually, this can come in handy. I kind of messed it up, but I will clean it one day. All right, we have two more items to talk about. Finishing your painting. I'm not gonna lie, out of at least 50 paintings, I have finished one of them. <laughs> and it was literally a month ago. So I know pretty much nothing about this subject. I do know what I used, which was Liquitex High Gloss Varnish. This was a little bit expensive. Oh no, I'm wrong, I have used other I, I've actually finished five paintings out of 50, so there you go. The other varnish I use, I don't have. I will insert a picture of what it was right here. Of course, I purchased it at Walmart. It was in a spray can. I didn't like it just because I'm an asthmatic, so anything in an aerosol can or in a spray can kind of um, aggravates my asthma. So I did um, purchase this. It was $13, $14. At Michael's, I used a very little bit of it. It's eight fluid ounces, the high gloss varnish. They have matte varnishes. I mean, varnishes could be a whole video unto themselves. So that's optional for when you're ready to finish your painting. Okay, very last, yeah, very last thing I have, a mask. This was when for I was dyeing um, yarn. So this is actually a particle mask and not a fume mask. But if you're super, super into safety and you don't want to be around like the flow troll, flow troll fumes, varnish fumes, you can absolutely get a mask. It's not crazy. A lot of us wear them. I wear them sometimes when I'm having asthmatic issues, but I will get like the disposable ones. I purchased this one on Amazon for like $24. I'm not going to lie. I do believe the ones that... Um, Repel fumes are more expensive, but just know that this is an option if those fumes hurt you or bug you in any way. Did someone say bonus round? <laughs> okay, I swear this is the last thing. I know this video has been pretty long, but it's something nice to just watch while you're painting or researching, and I do want to try and be as thorough as I can with everything I've given you. Okay. Epoxy resin. This stuff is expensive, but like I said, this is amazing for if you're wanting to turn your work into coasters to maybe sell them. 
it's really, really, really awesome for um, finishing paintings that you are like, this is top-notch quality. I must have this forever and ever and ever. Um, I use Total Boat Slow Hardener Epoxy, and the way it works is it's um, five pumps of the actual epoxy to one pump of the hardener. I've only used this a couple of times just because the fumes are extremely strong. And see, it's even leaking right now. The fumes are extremely strong. One second. And I don't necessarily think it's necessary. Um, I don't even like using it that much, but it's an option that you can absolutely use. So let me wipe this up and I'll be right back. Hey guys, so I forgot to mention that um, I do highly recommend a kitchen scale. We will be using that for our first video where we're going to be mixing our pouring medium as well as our acrylic paint. So if you'd like to pop out to Walmart and grab one, I know they're pretty inexpensive there as well as on Amazon. Um, I didn't show one, but what I've placed on the screen is a really decent one to purchase. It doesn't have to be fancy. I defi definitely recommend that it is digital. And um, let's get to the end of the video. All right, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know it was probably a little bit long-winded, but I just wanted to give a very thorough, um, I guess, covering of all of the equipment that I have used but bare minimum canvas some type of pouring medium uh, paint and mixing tools and remember keep it cheap because you are going to be burning through these extremely extremely fast if you guys would like to see any of myself or my life or my art on social media you can follow me on Instagram at spasmodic arts um, I'm going to start putting more of my acrylic pouring up there. Right now it's mostly diamond painting and then on Instagram stories I am just there constantly talking mostly about my verb. <laughs> um, like and subscribe please, I would really appreciate it and remember we're going to have so many more of these videos for um, acrylic pouring and I would encourage you guys to follow along. I'm, gonna co I'm going to try and keep each video between um, 10 to 15 minutes. I do want to go a little bit slow, but also a lot more faster. And as you can tell, I really need to go and get my coffee because how am I, blah, 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 I'm not talking fast enough. <laughs> but anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, I'll see y'all later, bye.